Aquarius is a special zodiac sign, so we're going to pick the numbers in a special place. Enchanters meet Polish high mountain Tatry. We couldn't be closer to the sky and clouds, so I thought it's the perfect place for picking prompts for our last air sign. As a typical Aquarius, I jumped weirdly to make a scale and threw snowballs to determine the numbers. And because that wouldn't be fair to the first few and the last numbers, we decided to randomize the prompts before picking prompt 5 and 8. So even though Aquarius is my sign, Barb desperately wanted to be involved. Very appropriately for Aquarius, we have a buzz. Do you hope for steampunk? <laughs> no, I don't. Well, nice. Maybe I hope for a male, so we could name him Mariusz, Mariusz Aquarius. So we're gonna pull from the vase, Base. vase, Base. one after another, till we get to the prompt numbers. Five and eight. Yes. One, two, three, four. Eyes, heads more, tails less. So it looks like we have our first flip coin of the season. Let me find a coin. <laughs> it's actually five, so matches the. Can you do the flip? Because it will be messy. Do a flip! <laughs> That's a meme. You don't have to put memes into your episode. Head looks like a number, and the tail looks like a other post key. It's tails. So that means one or zero eyes. Why didn't me? It wasn't supposed to be you. Inspect. <laughs> Insect. <laughs> Insect. Insect is better than inspect. This brings me back to the opportunity to mention Earth Defense Force. When we did uh, Rosa, I forgot about this game and it's such a glorious game. Mm. So I'm very excited about Insect. So we're doing an end? No, let's not do an end. <laughs> no, I'm not ready for that yet. Flashbacks. <laughs> Yeah. What bugs do you see? I mean air, so it's obviously gonna be a flying one, but like some water element in here as well. Dragonfly. That could work. Yeah. Dragon some are like, and flies. Somewhere near the lake staple. Just like last time, we want to pick a third prompt connected to me personally. Last time it was bark with memes. Memes. The most powerful tool of the modern era. So I thought maybe I could pick something like boring, super opposite, boring, and I picked boring, music. Uh, more specifically jazz music. So I'm going to be this boring old lady who listens to soft jazz, and I'm going to just shuffle. Mm? Very exciting. Playlist in the description. Cry me a river. Ah, oh, that might be tough to interpret. You have to have eyes to cry. I think Aquarius <laughs> as a crier is is a pretty nice trope. Water burr. Yeah, that will work. Yeah, definitely makes me think that the uh, dragonfly is a good choice here. So let's make a sad one-eyed dragonfly. No. <laughs> A sleek monster high body with a cute baby face of Laguna is what we need for a sad and ethereal air slash water insect. I think that Aquarius is one of the most difficult signs to portray, with Virgo being on top of the list. I want to keep the air and water elements, but I don't like the vase theme and because it's my sign, I will do what I want. For the eyes, we had three options, no eyes at all, one healthy and one closed eye, or a full weirdo mode with one big eye. You know what we had to choose. I made a test from our old Laguna Cyclops. She was made to be Sapphire from Steven Universe, and I tried if it looks good without the nose. I don't like it from the side, so we're going to try above the nose with our main victim. But if it doesn't work, I think I have one more Laguna to try. And if not, I'm just going to take just a different head. We will try. Let's go. The song that I picked refers to river and crying, and I think it's a perfect opportunity to make this doll waterfall inspired. Which, when you think about it, is water in the air, so we are sneaking the air element. <laughs> We did a Cyclop doll one time, it was Poppy, our Valentine's Day special from 2022, and a pastry-themed collab. She's also pretty weird, and I'm pretty sure she's also an Aquarius. But she has the eye sculpted and painted directly on the skin. This one will have an inset eye. Inset, insect, you know. This was a lot of cutting and sanding and polishing because I decided to get rid of their brow bones because I think she doesn't need them. Laguna has smiley lips and that's not what we want. We want sadness, suffering and despair. 
so I'm reshaping the corners of her mouth. After another session of sanding, I can finally add some colors. Before I do that, I see that Barb wants to tell you something. This video doesn't have a sponsor, but if you are loving this Zodiac series, please check out our merch store over at merch.enchantarium.com. I have updated the shop with designs up to Sagittarius and our lovely friend Pink Cuttlefish is already working on Cup and Aquarius designs. We also have something for the Hazardous Materials Labs fans and our timeless moniker have an enchanted day on some items too. We don't have like insane margins on the shop to make sure that everyone can have a piece of merch, but it really helps our channel when you get a piece, so check it out and let us know if you have any other enchantarium things you'd like to see on merch. And if you don't like physical items, you could check out our Patreon where we have our little behind the scenes community. Thanks! I know she's supposed to be an air sign, and she is, but I couldn't stop myself from adding some shapes that imitate water splashes. You can interpret it as also, you know, like airflow or something. And then my watercolor paints were screaming and begging to be used here. When I finally have a nice marbled skin texture on her face, I can take care of the eye. It's huge, definitely the biggest eye I was working on. Even smart dolls have smaller eyes. I don't want to make too many details around the eye because I feel like the iris should be the focal point. So I'm drawing some simple eyelashes and adding neutral colors around with pastels. I personally like colorful makeup, although it's not very visible because of my super strong and thick glasses, but I think this girl, she's a creature of nature, a free air slash water spirit that doesn't use much makeup or, or jewelry. I'm painting her lips and making sure that the corners are not going up. I want this kind of expression that she's about to cry, but still looking good, you know, not the type when you turn into a 100 years old red goblin. <laughs> I also want her to look innocent, that's why I'm painting the lashes pointing up. She's super pretty, but weird. I love her already. But let's work on the eye. I found this 3D printed base in my stash. It was designed to fit a smart doll, but we always use the smaller ones. I sanded all the 3D printing lines and started with a few layers of white paint. I will use watercolor pencils, acrylic paints and chalk pastels, so exactly the same stuff I use for face-ups. I draw the basic shape for the iris, but I quickly realized that it's too small and she looks extra surprised, so I made the iris bigger. It's bigger than human irises for sure. <laughs> And that's why I couldn't miss the opportunity to paint some extra details. And I'm not talking only about the thin lines and the iris structure, I'm talking about actual illustrative, illustrative details. How cool it would be if she had a little pond with some fish in the eye. She's a water bearer after all, nobody said what kind of water and how she should bear it. So I added two fish and some water lily leaves, first with white paint and then adding some colors. I refined it off camera and when I think it's good enough, I cover it with UV resin. Hand painted eyes are my favorite, even when the texture of pencils is showing. I thought that Cancer was a weird one, but I think Aquarius just stole the first place in the weirdness contest. Still cute though. If you've been here for a while, you might remember Rena, a transparent smart doll we borrowed to make a custom. Her wig was… me. Sorry Alex. And so the day has come when it will be reused. I trimmed the wefts as close to the old cap as possible to make new wefts for Alex to use later. Seems like the reduce, reuse, ikiki theme has carried on from Capricorn. Alex has a love for drapey fabric details, which generally are a pain in the scale, but I'm giving my best shot by using a stretchy mesh, which tends to follow the gravity laws a little bit better than other than fabrics. I cut a bit and then measured a bit. See? Doll customizing is easy. <laughs> at first I thought I would attach it at the neck to some necklace or something and I added bracelets to attach it to the wrists. I really didn't know what I was doing and I just played with it. Which seems to have led to something that looked nice. But I wasn't convinced that the white was doing it for me. <laughs> Ooh, wrong cover. After 
securing the blue dye and indulging in my juvenile humor, I heated up the dye and I did a test as I was aiming for an ombre effect. I dipped the fabric in almost to the end, then redipped a bit more shallowly and so on in hopes that it would dye more towards the end than the, well, the one that was dipped more basically. You know how that works. <laughs> I repeated that with the final shapes that I decided looked flowy and nice and left it out to dry. In the meantime, let's try something new and also something that has a full page of instructions, which is printing on transparency film. My printed needed a manual push to feed the film through, but I was able to get a nice print of these dragonfly wings out of it. I also toyed with the idea that I forgot where that was in the voiceover and now I don't know what I'm looking at and what I'm supposed to say. I also toyed with the idea of printing them in color, but ended up liking the black ones most. I thought I'd add some color to them with Parallax powders on resin, but ended up doing this workflow instead. I secured my black printed wings on some putty to my table and crumpled up some Angelina film to make it reflect light in all directions at once. Then, with a bit of resin, I stuck the film to the transparency. Then to make the colors on the other side pop a bit more, I added a thin layer of semi-transparent white nail polish and then just at the tips I added a bit more pigmented paint with a sponge. I then straightened some wire by twisting it in a drill and I added a small section of it to the wing and covered it with another layer of the printed detail, also with resin, to make sure it looks okay from the back as well. Okay, I think I will survive. <laughs> But basically, this is the nice side, and this is the less nice side, which is also still nice. So I think it's pretty good. I think for a first try with transparency film, they look super cute, and I love how much detail you can add by printing the little sections with a home printer. I need a hand donor, and this Frankie will be a perfect candidate. She was a magnetic mermaid tail test we did before we made Atlantis and Princess Atlantis, who can swap tails for legs. Harvesting upper arms is not as easy as forearms and hands. You have to injure the doll pretty badly. I managed to save her neck. I don't know why, but I'm the type of person that can't throw away a perfectly working thing. <laughs> it's a curse. It's my second time adding hands. The first one was for Rosa, the wasp demon, so also an insect-inspired doll. But before I can fix the arms in place, I want to sculpt some clothes directly on the body. I think that sculpted outfit will be perfect for both insect and air slash water cyclops spirit, and I'm using epoxy sculpt to do that. I did it in parts, so I don't ruin the torso when I'm working on the legs. Just as the splashes on her face, I sculpt big, bold waves in a very non-symmetrical style. Of course, on top goes a skin color, then white base and mint green on the sculpted parts. The blue skin gets some of the watercolor splashes. It's always so much fun to play with watercolor paints. The semi-chaotic way of dissolving in water and then drying into interesting shapes is surprisingly satisfying. I have to do that more often. Somewhere in the process, she started to look like a child of Jupiter and Earth. Or a mix of a few mint toothpastes. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm loving this effect. I have a few birthmarks and also vitiligo, so I like adding texture to the skin of our dolls. It's usually just freckles, but this time she's all covered in discolorations and patterns. I'm covering the green parts with UV resin for both wet and insect look. This whole outfit took a few days to make because of uh, thinking of the design and drying of the clay and sanding and priming and paint drying and contemplating my life choices and resin curing, but it's finally time to put the additional arms in place. I found this pretty green elastic that had the perfect size for holes in the arms, but it didn't want to cooperate. So I took this sewing elastic, definitely more durable, but not so easy to put into the dull parts. But hey, it works! Hey! <laughs> Yay! Let's move on to the hair. Barb prepared these wefts for me and I can glue them to the doll. For Tsula we picked the ones that had more blue than green, so what is left is more green than blue. <laughs> but that's good, we need some more colors, not only mint and teal, she can't be one colored. 
you can see the big gap still being a big gap and it's going to stay this way forever. I want to be able to change the eye position so I left it open. I never did that so I hope it works. Anyway, I'm gluing the wefts with white glue starting from the back. This fiber has a lot of volume so I'm gluing as little as I can to avoid big hairstyle. It's nothing bad, our girl sag has big wavy hair but I think this one needs a more sleek silhouette. The parting is always tricky, especially when the fiber is wavy, so I can't say it's my best work, but I think it's, it turned out pretty cute. You have to glue the parting weft in the opposite direction to what you want, put it as close to the one that you already have, and cover the glued part with some more wefts. Then flip and pray it looks good. The hole still works, um, you can put a finger there and change the eye position. She still misses the dragonfly wings. I think they turned out super pretty and I can't wait to see her wearing them. I'm making a few holes with a heated needle and putting the wings inside. And she looks like this, like a sad little bunny with the ears down. Super cute. But wait, Barb made more of these sparkly wings. I'm gluing them to the holes that Laguna has in her legs and securing them with UV resin. I have to admit, I have a love-hate relationship with AB jams. They are pretty, but I feel like they never suit any project because they are so colorful but also grey at the same time. But here, oh my god, they fit perfectly with the sparkly wings. I added them to the hair and on the lower lid to make some sparkly tears. She may be depressed, but she is glamorous. I also added some UV resin around the tears and some wet marks on her cheeks, like she was really crying. As always, we need a zodiac symbol somewhere on the body and we still don't have the color of Aquarius' stone, Garnet. So I thought maybe she's crying because she has a cursed wound or something like that that doesn't want to heal. The symbol and red garnet in one detail and you can flip the hand and not see it. It turned out a little bit more gory than I, I thought it would but uh, I was tempted to put resin on top so it's looking wet but I don't want to be too graphic with this detail, you know, let's keep it simple and clean. The last step is to attach the flowy fabrics to her wrist, but before I'll do that, I want to add some last bit of sparkle with a glitter spray. It's a very subtle shine, but I think it adds this vibe of a waterfall in the sun, sparkly and, and just beautiful. And with this detail, she's ready! This is how she turned out. I think she might be a very strong contender to the throne Cancer as my favorite zodiac so far. I am really loving the single eye and the detail Alex put into it and I have to give her my crown as I tried to do a single eye mod before in our doll customizing journey and it for sure wouldn't have looked this good, so I'm glad I gave up on it. We are running a bit late with Aquarius, but we are so close to finishing the series with Pisces being our last doll to make. It's your last chance to join over at Patreon to be eligible to win one of the Zodiac dolls and I've prepared a post on how the giveaway will be run, so make sure to check out that too. Are you excited for Pisces or have we already made your sign? Let us know in the comments down below. I want to hear all the fan theories. Why does her zodiac symbol bleed? Did she do something terrible and got cursed? Or she's just super clumsy and constantly hurts herself? That would be a very Aquarius thing. Why does she have fish in her eyes? And are the fish Pisces? Help us figure that out! Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! This video was made thanks to our Patreons. The biggest credit goes to our top Lost Sister tier supporters. Bunny Queen, Andy Murquack, Adia Bear, Wolfiana Wolfie, Lee, Mary Helen Burns, Call Me Ash, Barb from the Future, Aaron McCoy and Red X. We also thank our cousin tier Patreons. Tintalia, Griffin Rose, Malachite, Marianne 965, Abigail Williams, Alia Knight, Frankie, Miss Markishtar, Gaybrat, Whimsy, Whitetails, Hannah, Tiny Monster 707, Nanny Cat, Gabby Wrights, Link Enby, Thank You, Ellie LOL, Kip the 
Caroline, Awkward Sweet Potato, Lanita, Jessica Shrestha, Awkward Cat, Kido Kato, Burb BTW, Nala Korsholt, Ashley Priest, Ryu, Emerald Havoc, Krista Hopper, Zippy McAdoo, Emma Thomas, Yumi Azura, Galina Harcion, Lucky Ducky Lulu, Series Eden, Leon Draws Things, Mavi, DM Bakai Sro Ona Smith, Janet, Josephine Falk, KLM, Melissa Novoa, Renth, Fan of TA, Catherine G, Ashley, Etwell, Michelle Sweeney, Hannah Lemon, Ellis Sherbet, Zari, Amelia Blackwood, Andrea Brigadier, Ghostly Gardens, Pre LT, The Barbie Witch, Bowen, Inca, Stephanie, Tiffany Jeffords, Karaho, Landy Monk, Jane Beck, I Am Invisible, Karabu, Sivs Party, Dragon Art Customs, Ninja Star Dazino, Dream Up, and last but not least, Catherine Norton. Thanks, guys.